What four factors affect the level of interest rates? Well, they are production opportunities that the firm might have, time preferences for consumption, meaning do we prefer to consume now or defer consumption until later, risk, and expected inflation. And we've already had a few different types of interest rates, so let's just throw in some more. Let's make the distinction between nominal rates and real rates. So first, this is more the notation that we're going to be using. Lowercase r is any nominal rate. And remember, we talked about nominal rates as being quoted or stated rates. But r star is going to be the real risk-free rate of interest. Um, so it's like a T-bill rate with no inflation. But RRF is the T-bill the T -bill rate. Now, if we break down the R and the R star, the nominal rate, and then R star is going to be kind of part of the breakdown of that nominal rate, we have a few more components that we need to talk about. And so these are premia or premiums, which, whichever way you like to say it, that we add on to that real risk-free rate to arrive at the nominal rate. So those four premiums that we add are an inflation premium. So that's a, um, an extra cost that we add on to the real risk-free rate. The default risk premium, that's um, an extra cost to compensate for the possibility that the, that the issuer defaults on their interest payments. A liquidity premium, it's an extra cost that we add because um, we might, if we have a fear that we, we can't resell the security if we needed to, to get cash. And then a maturity risk premium that's related to the time horizon of the investment or the time until that security matures. So now speaking of those, um, those four premiums, some only relate to um, corporate securities and some relate to all securities. So let's look at them. The inflation premium Inflation is inflation. It's going to affect all securities regardless of the issuer. So you'll notice here that the inflation premium applies to short-term and long-term treasuries and short-term and long-term long corporate securities. But remember I said the maturity risk premium relates to the time to maturity of the security. So we're only going to have a maturity risk premium on long-term securities, whether they're treasury or treasuries or corporate. But then um, the default risk and liquidity premiums are only related to corporate securities because we don't have a risk of default on treasury securities because they're backed by the full faith and credit of the U.S. government. And then similarly, we don't have a liquidity premium for U.S. treasuries because there's a very liquid and active market for treasury securities.